been working on a 200 amp alternator conversion for the LMTV. So I disconnected the battery. I did some labeling on these wires. So I'm just going to disconnect everything from the alternator now. And then we'll get this out of here. All right, we have all the wires detached. There's the belt tensioner pulley and two bolts here and it should come right out of there. Okay, belt tensioner, 11 sixteenths. Some new belts too. The alternator belts will fit around the fan and between the fan and the shroud, but you will have to remove this airline out of the top shroud to get the belt off the airline because this airline goes down into the center of the fan. Okay, we'll just put this somewhere out of the way. Right there. Boy, that feels so tight. Okay, so we'll get another fitting here. is I have all my parts now and I'm getting ready to throw this thing in for good so what I had to do was make a new bracket that bolts to the engine block so this is the original alternator bracket I want something that's about twice as long and it could be taller so it'll stick out to here let's see what we got it doesn't need to be a very big piece of steel. I have a lot of scraps over here. Um, that one's a little bit thin. Boy, this piece of angle right here looks perfect. I had to make a bracket to go from this bracket up to the alternator because the tabs are located the different positions. To mark where these holes are and I think the best way to do that is to try to mark the edge of this block and then I'll measure over the best I can so right there let's see what we can do with this
Oh yeah, we got a nice line on there. 12 and 47. Okay, let's see how my holes came out. One in. Wow. That is awesome. I had to relocate this voltage regulator just a little bit. It was bolted here and I just moved it to there. So I think I've got this dialed in. I made a little bracket out of an old street sign I had. And I'm gonna just stick that under that bolt and right here. So I basically moved it this much. It was bolted square here. And the problem is this wire right here was interfering with where the bracket um, for this is bolted onto the block. Yeah, we need to cut this bracket. Let me scribe that and cut that off. I got some new belts that are one and a half inches longer than the original ones. I just have to fit that uh, alternator in here and drill this hole. Like I said, um, that alternator was hits right here. So I'm just going to hold that back just a hair, drill this hole because the alternator doesn't move to adjust the belt. It's this um, adjusting pulley here that uh, does the belt tension. Got a inch and a half longer bolt. This bolt is nine and a half inches, one and a half inch spacer to get the belts out where I wanted them lined up. A couple washers to take up the remaining space. The alternator bracket goes right here. And then here you have this sliding insert to take up the rest of the slack so you don't have tension on your tabs here. On the truck, the only thing we're gonna do is move the ground strap because it will no longer reach from the alternator to this hole. So I touched up the paint here and I believe it'll reach straight down to one of these holes, which were for the, one of the wheels for the front uh, winch line to ride on. While I had the alternator out, I decided to put a new water pump belt on. So that meant removing the fan from the top shroud. Let's put it together and get it out of the shop. It's coming up now, I can see it. Just enough travel on that to get it off. I'm gonna get this key out of here and clean that up at the same time. Perfect. Half inch drill bit. bolt and spacer There we go. Perfect. Now, everything looks good. The wire looks good. Let's put the pulley and the belts on next. Okay, that's on the idler pulley. Per 
perfect. I'm going to bring it to the outside pulley. Outs. Is that what I wanted to do? Yeah. Outside idler pulley. There we go. I'll put this one on. Perfect. Now I can pull the alternator back. So right now the alternator is resting on the block right here. So I'm going to pull that back and put this bolt in there. Right there. The alternator does not move to tension the belt. This belt tensioner down here is where that's done. 17 on that. Just gonna snug that one up so I can still run the tensioner. These are new belts. Let's see if we can crank it a little more. Man, it went a little bit more and it was tight enough to hold it there. See if I can snug that down. Oh yeah. Okay, I've got all my hose clamps tightened up. I got all the wires zip tied into place really good. This wire here, I actually flipped this terminal um, over where, the way it bolts to the alternator so it's lower instead of coming up higher because it actually made this higher than the bolt. And I'm trying to keep that as low as possible because when the cab is down, let me show you how close that is. Here you can see that the cab airbags are totally deflated. Okay, and then up here on the alternator, that 24 volt terminal is super close to the body right there. But as you can see, this paint stick does easily fit in between. So it's close, kind of a thicker paint stick. It does fit all the way. So there is a gap there between all the components with the airbag totally empty. I do have a pretty decent upper body mount, but if your upper body mount is deteriorated, you know, there's not much 
tolerance on top of the alternator. So this is a worst case scenario with the airbags deflated. So once you start getting a little air in there, you can see right away it lifts off pretty good. Let's hook up this ground. See if we got a charge. Okay, we'll start it up and see what we have for charge. I have this little USB port that reads the 12 volt and we have the 24 volt on the gauge here. It's coming online. Beautiful, up in the green on the 24, 14.6 there.